Buddy Grandpa here. Well, remember yesterday I said we're going to utilize our restored 10-minute time so that we can actually get some more in-depth looks at things related to painting and art. Okay, well, we're going to start right off on that today, looking at watercolors, okay? We're going to look at, at pans and tubes and liquid watercolor, and we're going to just see what each one of them is about. So, I tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, head on over to the to the easel and uh, begin our journey with uh, watercolor paints, okay? I'll meet you there. And here we are. Okay, let's talk watercolor paint. Now, watercolor is one of my favorite mediums to use. And we're going to take a look at the various paints. We have pan paints, which are either a hard compressed cake of, of pigment and binder. We also have semi-moist, which is bound with honey and they never go completely dry. And then we have tube paints and we have liquid watercolor. Let's take a look at each one. Okay, these are half pans. These are dry paints okay see they're just dry and there's there's nothing in there that is going to come off on your fingers these are great to have around especially for the kids okay in order to to activate it just take a little spritz or some water on a brush and just spritz it like that and then just give it a few seconds okay and it's ready to paint okay we'll just come right in here and move that out of the way and we have paint that's ready to go, okay? You'll probably replace pans a lot quicker than you'll replace tubes simply because there isn't as much, there isn't as much paint in these pans. But these are probably the most user-friendly paints that there are as far as watercolors go. They're easy to, to mix, and once they dry, you're you're good to go. Little kids aren't going to get paint all over everything with them. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you something that can happen with the dry paints if you do not keep them moisturized. They will just turn in to rocks of paint. Yes, you can use them again. Spritz them with some water, just like you would any other pan paint to activate it then you can come into it and let me move this and it'll paint okay so it isn't ruined it's just if they get in this thing and they're all crumpled up and you turn the thing over all of a sudden all those pieces of paint are rolling around loose in there and they're mixing with each other and then you have to pick all of the individual pieces of paint out and try to get it back together again. So if you're going to use dry pan paint, uh, for goodness sakes, be sure that you keep it moisturized. And when the pan gets empty, you can take tube paint and you can fill the pan up with tube paint and just continue on painting. Now, these two are pan paints. These are full pans, okay? They're twice the size of the little half pans, and these are semi-moist. They're bound with honey, okay? They never completely dry out. And if you reach in here and you touch it, it's sticky. See? It's sticky. Let me put that back in there, okay? And as you can see, they, they can be a little tough to manipulate, but as far as painting goes, all you need to do is just a quick spritz with some water. Go in with your go in with your brush, just like that. And they're ready to paint very, very quickly. And sometimes you don't even have to spritz it with water. All you do is just hit it with a damp brush. Okay. And it's ready to go. And I actually prefer the semi-moist, but that's a personal thing with me. I just like the semi-moist, 
semi-moist paints. Now, our next paint that we have are the tube colors, and everybody's seen these, okay? They're a little pricey compared to the pan paints, and they do go a lot farther as far as your bang for your buck. Now, I'm just going to use the lid of this, okay, as a palette. You take the tube paint out of the tube. Be sure that you get the lid on correctly so that it doesn't dry out in the tube or make it virtually impossible to open the tube. Now, when you add water to the tube paint, it immediately goes to a liquid and it's ready to paint also. One of the advantages of tube paints is if you're working on a large painting and you need to cover a lot of area, tube paint is the way to go because you can mix a lot of it up real quick, use a bigger brush and cover that area. Whereas with pan paint, you can cover the area. You're just going to be spending a lot of time mixing the paint, okay? Getting enough paint to cover an area. Now, with pan paint, one of the drawbacks to either of the of, of the pan colors, okay, is you have to be careful with your paintbrush when you're working with the paint because you can be dragging your paintbrush across the edge of the pans and it can damage your your paintbrush. So you've got to be careful when you're doing that. Whereas with the tube color, it's it's in a palette. There is a lot bigger mixing well. And you're not going to run into that problem. And now, the last one that we're going to look at or talk about are the liquid watercolors. Now, I don't have any to demonstrate with because, quite frankly, I don't use them. And what they are is they are literally a liquid watercolor. Some have pigment, some have dyes, okay? And they're really great for, like, lettering and, and, and such as that. They're ready to go instantly. You can do fine washes with them and glazes, and they're great. But the thing to remember about a liquid watercolor is if it is dye-based, when it hits that paper, it's there. You're not going to be able to lift it up as you can with other watercolors. By lifting, I mean you take it, you put water on it like that, you let it sit for a minute, and you can come in and you can lift it up. With a dye-based, uh, you're not going to do that. So, what would I recommend the most for virtually everybody? I would recommend the pans, whether it is a hard compressed pan or whether it is the uh, uh, semi-moist. They're, they're fun to work with. They're easy to work with. Uh, they're not as expensive as the tubes. And you can get wonderful mixes and great results with them. I hope this has helped. And uh, we'll be back next time to discuss another subject in painting. And until then, I want you to remember that I love you. I love you. I love you.